I'd like to start this message out with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you've given me to speak your word. And uh, Lord, I just pray that it would convict hearts, it would touch hearts. Uh, Lord, I pray that your word would go forth with your power and your presence, Lord, and nothing of myself, nothing of my own wisdom. Uh, and I just pray, Lord, that you would bless your word work in a mighty way, I pray. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you have your Bibles, um, I would ask if you could open up to John chapter 3. Uh, we'll be going through that text, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time? into his mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it come, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? In this text, uh, we see Nicodemus coming to Jesus. Um, if I were to put a title on this text, I, I would have to title it that uh, Jesus made this a requirement for us, not an option. Um, and what I'll be discussing is, I'll be discussing the second birth uh, when we are old. Everyone in this world, uh, regardless of where you're from, has born via natural birth from our mothers. There's hospitals all across the world are filled with parents, mothers waiting to experience that joy of childbirth. Newly expecting mothers are anticipating arrivals of their firstborn children or the new addition to their family. In fact, st statistically, in the U.S., over 4 million babies were born in 2007 alone. Um, but we must understand one thing in life, and a birth uh, that only comes naturally through, through your mother, through your birth parent, it is separation from God and ultimately leads into death, punishment, torment, and darkness. Now, there is a second birth, the one Jesus was talking about in this very text that we're going to go over. And with that second birth, it's a supernatural birth from Jesus Christ. One can only suffer a physical or bodily death, and we'll see how Jesus Christ shows us how each and every one of us could have victory over death and live in Jesus Christ's promise of everlasting life. The first thing we have to look at here is who actually is Nicodemus? Um, he makes his first appearance here in John chapter 3. Uh, by Greek origin, Nicodemus means victor over the people. Uh, Nicodemus was one of the three richest men in Jerusalem. Uh, now, when we see 
as we started off in verse 1, we notice verse 1 says that he was a man of the Pharisees, okay? And, and all that means is he was a, a member of a ruling body of Jewish authorities. He was actually a part of the uh, Sanhedrin Council, which the Sanhedrin Council is mentioned frequently in the New Testament in reference to the highest Jewish uh, judicial and administrative council in the first century. Um, if we skip to the last verse, verse 10 that we, we read, uh, we can see that Nicodemus was also a master of Israel. Um, now, just by knowing a couple of these facts, we automatically can state and know that Nicodemus was very religious and he followed it extremely strict. Um, to give you a possible idea of present-day comparison, Nicodemus would be something like the Pope of today. Um, now, when we look at a man like that, we look at a man like Nicodemus, we would think automatically that he is righteous enough to earn his way into heaven. I mean, after all, he had everything. He had money, he had authority, popularity. He was devoutly religious. But the interesting thing here that we see in this text is that Jesus didn't mention or pay any attention to what Nicodemus's own works were. In fact, we see that Jesus Christ showed Nicodemus something that he was lacking. And he opened Nicodemus's eyes to a far greater need that only he could fulfill, that only Jesus could fulfill. Now, the Bible does not tell us directly, but as we read in verse 2, we can see that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Now, there are several questions that this may raise. Uh, they're really not that important, but, you know, we, we could possibly say, well, Nicodemus was waiting uh, to be alone with Jesus as the multitudes of crowds departed from him or we can say that Nicodemus was concerned about his own reputation and he didn't, you know, fear of embarrassment, fear of consequences of being seen with Jesus um, could be the reason why he came to him alone at night. Um, but we see here that Nicodemus's very first mistake as he comes to Christ, he approaches Jesus with the idea that it was going to be a conversation between one man to another, one religious leader to another, one rabbi to another. Now, Nicodemus, he acknowledged Jesus' miracles, but he didn't recognize Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. And I don't want to stray away from the message, um, but it is extremely important that we don't make the same mistake. Um, all through the Bible, Old Testament to New Testament, you can see that Jesus Christ is God. Um, a couple, for instances, if we look in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Um, well, who is the Word? The Word is Jesus Christ. We, we see that in the very first chapter of John where it says the Word was made flesh. Jesus Christ, God, was manifested in the flesh. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. Um, we, we see in, in later in John chapter 14 that Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Um, and it, it's a crucial mistake if we don't recognize Jesus Christ as God. Because in Christ's very own words, in John chapter 8, verse 24, Christ is warning us, and he specifically says that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe 